In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to predict where a projectile will land. So first of all, you have to use certain lab practices to get accurate numbers and then use those numbers in such a way so you can eventually calculate a delta x, the displacement from the table where the projectile will land. So first of all, what do you need to do experimentally? You definitely want to take some measurements and find out what the displacement is from when the marble or the ball leaves the ramp until it reaches the edge of the table. The reason why you want to take all of your measurements after it leaves the ramp is because there is no force in the horizontal direction after it lands on the table. It's just force of gravity down and normal force up. Therefore, you can use the constant velocity formula. Velocity equals delta x over t. So you want to make sure you take your measurements of the table um, from the end of the ramp to the end of the table. So we'll say, for example, that is exactly one meter. Then you have your delta x. Um, secondly, you're going to want to find the time. So what you want to do is find several times and then average them. So once you have those two pieces of information, you have a delta x of one meter or whatever you measure along the horizontal surface of the table. And then you also have a time which may be getting possibly 10 times, adding them up, dividing by 10 to get a good average time. And we'll say that our average time comes out to 1.3 seconds. Okay, obviously depending on the situation, your times could be bigger or smaller. So I'm just coming up with 1.3 as my um, average time if I were to take a bunch of numbers. Now I would take one divided by 1.3 and then I would have an initial horizontal velocity of 0 0.71 meters per second. So now if you have to predict the delta x, the landing position of the projectile, we mostly have everything we need. We need to take one more measurement and that measurement is going to be the distance from the edge of the table to the ground. So say for example, you take a measurement of 80 centimeters, what you would do is you would go ahead and convert that into meters by sliding the decimal two places to the left. And you would actually plug in a delta y, displacement in the y direction, of negative 0.8 meters. The negative because it's being displaced downward from its original position of being right there. Okay, from here on out, now we found everything we needed to by taking measurements, um, taking some averages, and now just like any type of projectile motion with a horizontal and vertical component, we want to make sure we set up an X and Y column. So we're going to go ahead and place all of our variables into the X and Y column so we don't get them mixed up and then see what that leaves us with. All right, so I went ahead and placed my four known variables into the X and Y column. So experimentally, we went ahead and found that velocity in the horizontal direction, which was the 0 0.71 meters per second. Now, all that velocity was directed in the horizontal direction. So we have an initial velocity of 0 0.71 meters per second in the X direction and an initial velocity of zero in the y direction because the ball isn't being directed up or down as it leaves the table. Second of all, when it leaves the table and it's in free fall, we always have our free fall acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we went ahead and measured the height of the table and that gave us a delta y of negative 0 0.8 meters because it's displaced downward um, from its position leaving the end of the table. So the key to solving this problem is to find the time. So the time is the only 
value that can be placed into either column because it has no direction and the time in the air is going to be the same whether you're talking about horizontal or vertical values. So what we want to do is if we find the time on the Y side, we can slide the time over into the X column and that'll give us everything we need to find delta X. And then that is our final solution. So I'm going to go ahead and identify the formula over here. These are my acceleration kinematic formulas. And I'm going to identify the one where I can use these three variables to solve for time, which is this second formula over here. And then after I solve for time, I'm going to slide it over into this column to solve for my final answer. All right, so I finished solving for all of my values. I started off on the Y side because I only had a single variable on the X side, so nothing that I could solve for in the X direction. So I took my three variables in the Y direction, V, I, A, and Delta Y, plugged them into this second formula, and um, I plugged everything in, did two steps of algebra, dividing both sides by negative 4.9, and then square rooting it to find my time, and I found a time of 0.4 seconds, which I found in the Y column that can also be placed into the X column because time doesn't have a direction. It could be placed in either one of the columns. And in the X direction, remember, I can only use the formula velocity equals delta X over T. The reason being is because when something's in free fall, there are no horizontal forces acting on it. Therefore, um, it's going to move in constant velocity in the horizontal direction. So I plugged in my velocity of 0.71 meters per second that I found earlier. I set that equal to delta X over T, the T being 0.4, multiply both sides by 0.4, and I got an answer of 0 0.284 meters. So if I wanted to predict the landing position of this ball, what I would do is the best way would probably be able to hang a string with a weight on it so I can see exactly where the edge of the table is from the ground. And then I would measure um, 0.284 meters, which is 28.4 centimeters. And that's how you predict the landing position of a projectile by using some um, experimental values, plugging it into our X and Y column, and then solving for our delta X. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching and listening.